Welcome to my summer garden update. Butterflies are all starting to wake up. You see a gulf fritillary right there. Let's see who else we can see already. and now we're in summer but here in Florida a lot of people find it really hard to garden in the summertime and I feel like this is the point at which a lot of people just totally give up and I really don't want to see you guys give up because gardening in Florida gardening in the subtropics is such a magical wonderful thing and yeah there are some plants that look a little sad right now even in my garden but there's so much that's looking really good so today we're going to do a full summer garden update I'm going to take you from the front to the back to the sides you get to see it all the good the bad the ugly I'll take you up you know me I'll just, I don't care so we'll look at the vegetable garden wildflower gardens, native plants, exotic plants, food plants, orchids that my friend from work gave me a couple years ago. Aren't they so pretty? It's just every year. It's just getting better and better. <laughs> so let's go. We'll look at the whole thing. There goes Mr. Cliff. <laughs> Out to do some errands. So get your hat, get your sunglasses, and probably put on some suntan lotion because that sun is intense when it comes to Florida summers. So if you're wondering what my yard looks like from a distance, this is it. This is what my neighbors see almost every day as they walk by with their dogs. This is why they usually see me and like wave at me. But yeah, it's looking so lush and so green. And I think one of the big things that has changed has been this Royal Ponciana. The Royal Ponciana, it's a tropical plant. It's from Madagascar and it has filled in and it's creating some wonderful shade, which I really appreciate at this time of year because the sun is intense. And while I tan, like I just, I can only take so much of it. <laughs> so let's take a little bit of a closer look. I'm gonna take you around the whole thing. So let's go. So let's start to head into the garden. And I mean, look at these giant sunflowers. I'm probably supposed to chop the heads off of these things, but we have two different types. I think it's skyscraper and mammoth sunflowers and they are just so pretty. Actually, did you know, I learned this recently, that these are actually lots of little tiny flowers. And then this is Brax. So we have the mammoth, that one was so tall. And these, I think the smaller ones are skyscrapers. And you remember, look, these are our papayas. There's the one and the others. And remember when I transplanted them, I told you guys, they look so sad, but look at them now. They're doing great. They are taking off like crazy. You can see, you know, it'll lose some leaves, but they're putting on lots and lots and lots of new leaves. So they are gonna be growing and grow. Oh my gosh, who knows? I, who knows when they're gonna put their new flowers on? Probably in the next month or two. There's so much rain right now. Like it's that time of year. You can already see when I started this video early this morning, the sky was completely blue, not a cloud around and there's a monarch. But as this day goes, you know, in Florida, we get these afternoon storms. So it goes from totally blue sky and then all the moisture is heading upwards. In front also, we've got our fabulous June sunflower, which is in a significant need of a pruning. You can see it's come up, cascaded out, it's flowering all over the place. But this is our native sunflower. I love these, these are so cute. And they flower almost the entire year. If you're looking for a ground cover plant, not necessarily a shrub cover plant, cause these are actually box hedges below this, <laughs> but they're jumping up and over it. I just need to trim them back. I usually trim them back to like there or to the edge of the plant. And then we let it do this every now and then, but it looks gorgeous. We have a crepe myrtle here. It's been there probably for five, six years now. I honestly don't know why we've kept it. It's just probably more because I don't feel like getting inside of there. 
Um, but that may go at some point. <laughs> it's just not looking so cute. But now you can get a better idea of look at all our sunflowers and our papaya here looking so cute. And hey, if you look back a couple months ago, that Cassia fistula, which is a golden shower plant, was basically looking like a giant stick and it has exploded. As soon as we started getting regular summer rainstorms, this thing has filled in and you can see my beautiful cloudless sulfurs running around, running, flying around. You know, I'm, I'm creating my little Kanto moment here with all the yellow butterflies, but this thing has just, I can't even, which is great because the whole purpose of planting this tree here, it's actually a very small tree compared to what a lot of trees can get to. But the idea is, is that it's creating shade for my house, which as you can see, like I said, it exploded. So now where's my front door? But we'll deal with that. There's gonna be a whole pruning that needs to happen here because this thing is just going absolutely. Can you see how tall that is? That's tall, let me think. That'd be about 10 feet there. So we're probably about 20 feet all of a sudden. This thing, when we bought it a few years ago, it was shorter than this little hedge line. Just to give you an idea, like that, like two, two and a half feet tall, nothing. And now, whew, looking gorgeous. And if you kind of see some coral flowers down below, those are Cleodendrum glory bowers, looking so tropical, so pretty. Got these from my buddy Cliff, my neighbor. He has tons of these. He actually just was like, hey, just take some one day and have fun. So they're all in here. They grow really tall. He tends to cut them way down and back and then let them flower again. They do spread a lot. Honestly, if I didn't have cement all around it, I would be very worried. Same thing with these Mexican petunias, um, which also are... I guess if they have some structure to hold them up, they do get ridiculously tall. That is about eight feet tall up there. Um, but these can be also quite aggressive growers. Both of these are. The only way I felt comfortable keeping them is because I've got cement and cement and cement and cement all enclosing them in so they cannot get out. Um, so that's just a thing. So just buyer beware. If you get any of these types of plants, they are super aggressive. Um, and of course, Mexican petunia is an invasive species to our, to our state. But if we continue onward to the wildflowers, yay, look how pretty. They have gone absolutely nuts right now. <laughs> Can you believe this? Specifically this one right here. This is frog fruit, a fantastic lawn alternative. And it is just, it was one little plant. And when I first planted it in, it was just really slow to start to fill in the area. I had to keep pulling back mulch. And as soon as it heated up and the rains came, oh my gosh, it has filled in. Well, it's covered my walkway, which I'm gonna have to deal with that at some point, but right now I'm just kind of letting it establish itself because I really do want it to be in here. My intent is not to have to lay down mulch in the long run in this area. So I want it to be able to get as many footholds before I start knocking it back, which I'm not gonna do yet. My favorite, like this is my probably my favorite, like probably the favorite of my wildflowers, which is the Coreopsis Leavenworthy. I love this thing. It's just such a happy flower for me. Look at it. I mean, you just see the pollinators are on it all the time. They love it. Definitely has 10, gotten me 10 times the amount of pollinators outside of things like butterflies in our yard. Tiny wasps, we get all sorts. I don't know enough about bugs to tell you all the types. I can just tell you they're not all bees, but they're really cute and I love this. This other ground cover here, oh my gosh, look at the beach verbena. This has exploded also, and it is gorgeous. Remember, all these wildflowers native to the state of Florida, and they are so pretty. And look at these, they are such a pretty color. Does this not feel Florida to you, like this color? This just feels really Florida. And then with that yellow, this just feels very tropical. So I'm just loving this. We'll come back to this in a second, because we're gonna admire one of our most tropical looking native plants, which is our firebush which also has exploded. And now it's in front of my door. I know, I'm so much pruning. My husband was like, so when are you pruning this? Can I prune this? I feel like we need to prune this thing because it's going crazy. But the butterflies, the bees, everybody's loving these. They're just, ugh. And how can you not? They're so pretty. Most of our medium large butterflies, oh, just flying around all day. You gonna come back or am I too close to you? Probably too close to you. My zebra long wings love flying right under here. I, I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a window down here, and this is where I actually do my editing. And I look out this window and I can see all the butterflies go by. But at the firebush, it looks gorgeous. Everybody's visiting all the time. But back over to our native wildflowers. Oh, that's a desert rose. 
it hasn't looked as happy over the last couple of weeks. We did get, I think, um, what kind of are they? Oh, the polka dotted wasp moth caterpillars. Say that five times fast. Polka dotted wasp moth caterpillars. And people will tell you, oh no, it's gonna kill the plant. Look, it's a host plant, just like our wildflowers are host plants. If the plant's not doing well, it will not live. If the plant is doing well, it's fine. They came in, they ate some leaves, they're gone. I look forward to seeing the polka dotted wasp moth. It's a moth, it's not a wasp, but it looks like a wasp, but it's really cute. Hiding amidst, these were our Stokes asters. Those had those big, lighter, kind of lavender purple flowers. Really, really, really pretty. Um, they are now going to seed. I don't know that they're gonna put out any more flowers, maybe in the fall, but they're really happy. I heard from other people that they don't really like full sun. And while this is a full sun location, um, I think the beach verbena and some of the other plants kind of crowding it, I guess would be the word, um, is giving it the, the break from the intense sun rays that it needs. Because Stokes Aster, if I remember correctly, is, while it is a Florida native plant, I think it's more North Florida, like Panhandle. And I'm in Central Florida, so we're probably getting way too intense a sun for this, but it's still looking cute. It looks happy. We're happy. It's happy. Oh, more Coryopsis. And my Coryopsis is spreading over to my vegetable garden. Ah, I love it. Like I told you guys, the plan is, is not to have to lay down so much mulch in the future because it's hot, it's hard, and it's tiring. So if I can have more wildflowers spreading like this, this is sunshine mimosa, I'll be very happy. Okay, we're focusing. We got our cute little butterfly. That's from my best friend, Shelby. Um, and then right here, we've got our dotted horse mint, which is an edible native plant. We can see it's putting on the bracts. These are supposed to flower more in the fall time, well, flower, bracts in the fall. Um, but they've been actually putting out bracts in the spring and now the summer too. So I'm thinking I'm gonna need to cut it back because it's just falling all over the place, as you can see, um, which is opening up some space because there is some other stuff kind of planted close by, like with like the sweet goldenrod here. So, I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing, um, but what I don't wanna have happen is more weeds get in, cause that will not be a good thing. Now, I did get a free plant apparently from the nursery. This looks like a mist flower. I have to double check to see if this is a native mist flower. I know there is a bad type and there are good types, and I gotta go figure that one out. Just haven't had time yet. So for now, I've left it. Um, you can see there's some blue-eyed grass. I've also heard from people that this does not handle some of the full intensity sun, which this one's kept going but you can see it's getting shaded by some of the other plants. Our blanket flower is doing, it's blanketing. The blooms have definitely slowed down on our blanket flower. Um, it's going to seed, but it's, it looks cute, but now it's just on the sidewalk and I need to cut all this back because this is shenanigans. If you're noticing the pink there, that's actually a plumeria flower, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but you can see it, some of it has put on some additional flowers. I thought it was going to be kind of spent and we were just going to be in these, um, sea pod kind of looking things for the balance of the year but it keeps coming and coming and coming so I'm wondering if I do cut back some areas what do you guys think if I cut back some areas what's going to happen is it just going to be empty am I going to be happy about it I don't know more beach verbena oh this green thing right here this green thing right here this is blue curls it did put on some flowers in spring and then it really hasn't put on flowers since then I don't know if this is just establishing itself and then it's going to really you know, go crazy later on because it is a perennial. So who knows, maybe it'll put more energy into flowering in future years. And then this area, the black eyed Susans kind of just went wee and now they're done. And then this bees bomb, you can see kind of exploded and now it's fallen. It's re getting leaves right here. I don't know if that's not the right word, um, but it is getting some leaves right down here on the branches. So I may need to cut this back because I'm concerned that it's gonna seed all over my vegetable beds here which you can see this vegetable bed has exploded with sweet potato vines because that's what sweet potatoes do in the summer. Those of you who've moved from the north and have not done sweet potatoes and you struggled with sweet potatoes when you grew up north or you watch northern gardeners struggle with it, now you see what I mean. These things, they just go in like crazy. And actually I gotta grab some because there are some right there too. I need to get that out of there. So there is my sweet potato bed. It is going crazy. I just, all I've been doing honestly has been pulling the sweet potatoes and just not the sweet potatoes, the vines. And so that they don't root down below, I just kind of throw them back up on there. And when I get some mulch, eventually I will rebury some of this. 
um, so that it can just do its thing. The, shockingly, the cabbages are still going. They look sad. I forget what I planted in here. Oh, he says, but they have not taken off. I don't know what's up with my he says. So I've kept the cabbage going because I don't see a he say peppers taking off in this bed. And then I did plant, what did I plant in here? Ginger? Is that ginger guys? I haven't done any research. You're getting this live. Is that ginger? Cause I think that's where I stuck the ginger. I don't know. I might just throw sweet potatoes in just because yeah. Okay. And then back here, more native plants. Woo! So you guys remember this? Here is our native endangered mist flower looking so pretty and it's filling in really cute. Our wild petunia, our calamint. Some calamint back here and here. I again need to chop back these fire bushes. They're really shading the back ones out a lot, but they have filled in really, really nicely. I just want to see them fill in a little bit more. And um, I think my fire bushes really challenging them because they are flowering. They are putting on berries, which will create an issue later because the birds will eat these berries and then I will have fire bush all over the place again, which is okay. We like feeding the birds. There's a lot of birds. I mean, it is, it's hot. I'm sweating. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, hat, stay. That monarch is not a paid actor. Okay, here's our monarch milkweed garden. You can see lots of tall stands of milkweed. This is all swamp milkweed in this section. Um, there is a Stokes Aster similar, kind of just going to seed there. And then if you see this purplish flower, this is our giant ironweed, which you can see has gone up to seed here. Um, our native porter weed has kind of pulled back very suddenly with the rains. It was very lush, very full in spring. And once we really start getting our hard rains, I don't know what has happened. It's just died back a lot. It's still here, but it's really the sections that kind of where it was creating a lot of ground cover has just opened up very suddenly, um, which is what I do not remember happening last year. But you can see the leaves are getting eaten back. There are some caterpillars around where they are. I do not know. There's, I've seen some of them throughout the day. There you go, that fifth in star. So, and if you're wanting to learn a lot more about milkweeds, I'm putting together, or I have been putting together a whole crash course. I will link it in the description below so you can learn lots and lots about milkweed, especially my favorite native types over here in Florida. So this is what this area is looking like. Lizards. Yeah. Now, one of the things I did add that was a native plant was over here. <laughs> um, really because I'm tired of showing you guys my neighbor's recycling bin. So we got a privet senna which is looking really cute. This will fill in, this will get really pretty yellow flowers. Host plant to all those yellow butterflies and it'll just kind of block this because I'm sure you're enjoying seeing Shane and Kim's recycling bin, but I didn't feel like it was should be there all the time. So I put in a nice shrub so we can block it in the long run. And if you remember when I added some flowers back in, here's the brown savory. I would love to show you some of the other flowers like here is the orange cone flower, which has kind of come and now it's going into seed. And then the rest all got pulled by my landscape people. Because why? I don't know. They just did. This is the, ch this is the challenge. <laughs> this is one of my challenges. They, they literally pulled an echinacea the day after it flowered. I was super bummed. But yeah, but this is the browns. It's doing really good. It is starting to fill in this area. It was struggling for a little bit, but now it seems to be bouncing back. And of course, there's just lots of grass. But once this fills in more, I think when the porter weed fills in some more, we'll be able to start really pushing this grass back some more. Hmm. Talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. You remember with our vegetables, we did have some vegetables in here. All these I think have gotten pulled. You've seen, I think most of it. Um, but the Everglades tomatoes did die off in the pot, which is a little surprising because they can root down and through this pot, but they are done. The garlic we pulled and of course the carrot we pulled on video one of the times. So for those who are doing Everglades tomatoes in pots, that's what happened to mine. And it did not reroot in this area. I was hoping it would try to, but it did not. So that's my experiment lesson there. Over here, we have our two giant grand name bananas. Um, I've got two that look like they're gonna be probably putting out another bunch of bananas in the next month or so. So I would expect this one is starting to get its lean. The uh, leaves are very upright on this one. So I believe this one's gonna come first that one should come second. Um, so I'm thinking August, that will be dove dropped. Eh, maybe by end of July, we'll see. This one, 
yeah that, that one's probably not until august it'll drop its bunch and hopefully be ready by the time we get to november and just to make sure we go and cover this we'll go through the vegetable garden really quickly of course i have lots of vegetable gardening videos that are more specific but just to give you guys an update of where we're at in july one i have this gorgeous orchid that a co-worker had given me a couple years ago he was moses he's a sweetheart and a half and this thing just bloomed like crazy i'm not a person who really knows a lot about orchids my really my take on them has been figure it out or they just die and that's okay but these are looking gorgeous um on here if you see the little tomatoes these are all everglades tomatoes they're doing awesome where a lot of other types of tomatoes are starting to fail in the heat um, these ones are really liking the shadier section right now. And actually you can see these Everglades tomatoes over here. While you see it's more spent at the bottom, the tops, gorgeous green growth. They're still flowering. They're still putting on fruit. You can actually see some new tomatoes up there. So they're doing awesome. Um, it's, this is hands down one of the best tomato plants for Florida. I think everyone's a green. Uh, Cubanelles up here in the front. You can see some Cubanelles are ready to be picked in the next week or so. Oh, well, I got a lot there actually. That's crazy. Oh, geez. I just picked this all last week. If you watch my video, how I saved $240, I literally just picked these last week. So, okay. Um, we can see the jalapenos and the grand marconis like we talked about looking more spent. The ones up here doing great. This basil has bounced back, which has been really exciting. I think it's getting a little bit more shade, so it's happier more Everglades tomatoes. Here's that 4th of July I was talking about. Overall, it's looking a little sad, but it's putting out really nice sized fruit. And it looks really happy and healthy up when it's amidst the Ponciana leaves. So this one is the one that I was also saying we sh you should definitely consider growing, especially come fall. Um, it's still putting on fruit. I don't know if you can see it or it's still flowering and it'll put on more fruit. So it's been going and going. The grape tomato, there you can see it looks very sad. It's still putting out tomatoes, but in a very sad way, but that's okay, we'll let it be. And then down here at the base, where is it? Oh no, I planted it further down over here because I kept seeing it was getting stressed on the corners. So I kept replanting um, Lufa. So here's my Lufa plant to have go up. I had originally wanted to put them on the most Northern sections, um, but honestly, they, they're just getting too stressed and I noticed it on all four northern corners so I on this side moved it down just because I thought maybe a little extra shade would help it kind of take off but you can see lots of tomatoes over here eggplants flowering 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 but no eggplants this basil looked like it died off now suddenly bounced back and here sunflowers um you can see here some roselle starting to come on I replanted just about a couple weeks ago because some of it hadn't, you know, we had we had the stepping problem. So I've been replanting rosels, and I'll probably do another round of just replanting in this section because it looks like again we didn't take off. I'm thinking we're getting too much sun for this area. Lufa down here again. You can see seminal pumpkin struggling, but it's here. I let one carrot flower because why not? And then if you look at this, there's this big leafy plant. This is that Puerto Rican black bean that I got from Elise. And they seem to be doing really well. And I've not noticed any fruit being set on it, but it's going. What else? Anything else in here? Oh, okra. I did tell you guys I planted okra. There is okra. But you can see, look how sad this one is in full sun. Look how happy, happy. Lesson learned, right? In Florida, full sun. It's too much sun for most vegetable crops, even ones that do well in summer. But let's keep going. We've talked enough about vegetables on this channel. Onward. Oh, but I have been working on trying out like having the sunshine mimosa go through here to really help with cooling. You can see on this side, we got a lot of it and it's creeping in that way. So I, this is what I want to kind of do in the future is have sunshine mimosa. I'll put like a light layer of mulch in here and then we won't have to set as much mulch. It'll help suppress more weeds on its own. So the biggest weed is probably gonna be Everglades tomatoes this coming year because they just, they drop and I cannot keep up with them. And I'm gonna end up with a ton of them next year. I can just already, I even not even next year, fall. Fall, I'm gonna have a ton of them. So we're gonna be picking lots of tomato weeds. 
Now we come over here. Let's come back over to our wildflower garden. You guys can see where we're at. And of course, this is one of the favorite plants of our large medium butterflies. This is peacock flower. And it is gorgeous. Now I will tell you, be careful, buyer beware. This one does grow and spread new little plants. You can see a bunch of new ones down there. Now even in the middle of my fire bush. And they've got nice little thorns on it. So when you go to prune it, you get the joy of finding out why you may not want it. But if you can keep it kind of in a good area where it's not gonna spread like crazy and you can keep it under control, you can see it's climbing up the pine. My large medium butterflies love this because they will come up and over the house. And big butterflies, 10, I found to want to stay up high. And this is one of the plants that will bring them in first. And then they'll make their way usually to the fire bushes and then whatever type of wildflower that they like. Different ones seem to gravitate towards different things, just to be honest. So different stuff seems to attract them. But I will tell you, that's one of the ones that brings them in first along with firebush. And there they go. That's a goal for Larry. Now, if you're of course looking for a sense of the tropics, frangipani or plumeria, this is a huge old tree. I've had landscapers who I've talked to before and they've said, they have not really seen one this big. I'm guessing it was put in 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So it's it's huge. And it's got gorgeous pink flowers on it. Let's see if I can show you, where are they? Pink with yellow, they are so pretty. And it provides a really nice canopy when we hit the summer months. What it doesn't, it, it looks like a stick in the winter, honestly, if you ever see my videos, it's like, Tim Burton style, Edward Scissor hands. But this is a big old one. I don't know how much longer it's gonna last. The bark's been splitting down here, but we'll keep it going as long as it wants to go. So now we're gonna head into the food forest and our shade native garden or shade butterfly garden. I don't know what I call it, the shade thing. It's a shady place and it'll be nice to keep going into the shade right now because it's so hot. Let's go. So through our, of course, Confederate Jasmine arch, super pretty. Um, we got our little sign. This was from the previous owners, the garden entrance. And we're going to go right into our mini food forest with our dwarf Cavendish, which honestly, other than being food for future raised garden beds, I'm not really worried about these ones actually doing any amount of bananas, but they do provide a lovely shade to my compost bin. And we'll make them really, really good for fertilizing down the road because they are sucking up what's in there. like crazy. Our mulberries, um, while they have some nice green growth up a high, they're looking a bit stressed. They're not really setting on any fruit. They've got a little bit here and there. Like if I come in closer, you will see there's some green fruit there, but here's what's going on. This is happening both with tomatoes. Ah, stink bugs all over the place right now on tomatoes, on mulberries. They're around. They are predatory, so they're not the worst thing in the world, but like they also lay their eggs, I think, in some of the tomatoes or something is, and then they're attracted. This is a climbing aster native plant. I think it blossoms winter and fall, winter, spring, winter, something. Um, and then there's some native poinsettia down here. There's some more papaya that has taken off because that's what happens in my yard. Lots of papaya and doing wonderfully well if you remember last year we put in the white passion vine i have not seen any flowers yet but we have been getting so many caterpillars and like my friend from little red wagon had told me he said this would be really good for the zebra long wings and the zebra long wings hands down love coming to this way more than the corky stem at least that's what i'm finding in my yard so i don't know if i can see oh there's some corky stem or not corky stem um here's some zebra long wing caterpillars let's see if I can get you on film there they are so these little white guys and they are not dangerous to touch but we'll leave them alone so we've been getting so many so 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 many oh there's more oh my goodness look at them tons of them right here here I'll zoom in for you guys so these are all my zebra long wings I have so many zebra long wing butterflies this year that was one of our goals I know they look pokey. Hey, leave that little guy alone. But while they look pokey, they really aren't. This doesn't hurt at all. So this is why I'm getting so many. And this plant does really well. Actually, you can see um, while it has all of this trellis that it could grow on, 
it's really hanging in the shade quite a bit. So the zebra long wings are coming in and then they're laying their eggs. Oh, look, this one just went from its old skin to its new skin. That's pretty cool. Um, the, the plant really is hanging back in the shade quite a bit, which is great because this gets a lot of shade. And the more that the mulberries fill in, this will just shade it even more. So this is doing awesome. It's doing exactly what we were hoping. Totally recommend the white native white passion flower. You can see down at the bottom, it's just like this little stick and then it just goes, woo, woo. Um, shiny wild coffee. It did blossom this year. It did, I think, put on a couple berries. It's looking great. It's loving the shade. So the quirky stem here, um, it is attached to the ground. You may see like three leaves here. It is getting demolished. Oh, that's, that's a zebra. But usually I see gulf fritillary caterpillars. It, they're, they're getting destroyed by gulf fritillaries. Absolutely. This thing cannot take off. Um, it's just getting so much activity. And honestly, I have quirky sum in a couple areas that I did not buy, you know, wild. But the reality is, is it's just so much gulf fritillary activity that other than the white passion flower, we're getting, I don't expect any flowers this year because they're demolishing it. They're just demolishing it, which are we mad? We're not mad. We're not mad. So just the thing to know that sometimes with your passion flowers, the gulf fritillaries just go really hard. Oh, blue jay. This is a big area right now for um, a lot of birds. Cardinals love hanging out in here. Brown thrashers, blue jays. They probably got freaked out that I'm in here. So they hang out in here. More mulberries. There's an avocado back there. It didn't really fruit this year. Boo, avocado. I actually am probably going to try to transplant that slash buy a new one and put it out there. More climbing aster. I think that's the main thing. Oh, and then this is aquatic milkweed. Um, another native milkweed that actually does pretty well in the shade. So there you go. Welcome to the backyard. The part of the yard most people think is very, very pretty. And I will tell you, there's not as much going on back here. You won't see nearly the amount of wildlife uh, as you do up here. Which leads to a question that a lot of people ask me, what kind of pest control do you do like on my vegetable garden? I'm like, I don't. The birds take care of it, the wasps, the ladybugs, all the things. Um, but this is where you see the difference. Um, and it may not show up as well in the video, but you definitely can see it when you're here, is that there's just so much wildlife up front and not so much in the back. So while it looks really pretty, it's kind of like what we see in a lot of Florida, which is it's kind of an ecological semi-dead zone. It, this actually does get life because we do have some native plants and plants of interest to wildlife on the perimeters, but the grass, like they don't, they don't do anything with it. So. And what you'll also notice, um, you may not have picked it up because I probably didn't point the camera at the grass in the front yard, is the grass is super stressed out right now. And that's because it's getting plenty of rain. It got, you know, it's got healthy soil. The sun rays right now are so intense, it's definitely burning up grass, which in the long run, we don't want to put effort towards this. Personally, I'm not going to put effort towards it. We have landscaping guys for now, but as you heard, they pulled some of my plants. I'm not thrilled. So in the future, this is all gonna transform. How long will it take us to get there? Probably in the next couple of years. That will be covered on the channel. We'll start to transform this backyard into something amazing, amazing. Well, let's take a look. We've got um, our cordelians. We got this fern thing. Oh, calamondin. Oh, it's got fruit on it. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Whee! There you go. Got calamondin. There's some of that set fruit. Um, that one's awesome just because the uh, giant swallowtails do, they do use that as their host plant. You can see some more of our native firebush hanging out back here, hiding behind this jacaranda, a plant that I've wanted since I was a little girl <laughs> growing up in South Florida. It has not flowered yet. I am waiting for the day. We've had it for five years now, every year. That, the grand, the poncienna and the the golden shower. I This year I was like, maybe, maybe the flower. I was super hopeful nothing but the day when they do flower how gorgeous it will be the jacaranda will come in first then the ponce no then the the golden shower will come in and then the ponciana it will be magical i look forward to that day but until then hey let's enjoy other things uh we got some tropical sage down here um i don't know if you can see it it's just really green there's a little bit of it in there some more over here we've got lots of crotons of course our areca palms more tropical. It's actually spreading. Oh, there's some Virginia creeper back here. 
um, which is native. It's just an aggressive native, so you know, it's a thing. Lots of areca palms. Here is our non-native firebush. It's still hanging around, but not for much longer because I've got a project plan right here coming in the future, a shade native garden that I want to put in. Um, I'm really excited. I've been picking out some plant ideas, so yay. So that'll be sometime this month, sometime in July this year. Um, Aw, one of the people who used to work for me slash friend from work, she got me these um, Pineland Lantana, so it was very sweet of her. Of course, we have these, which are doing great, which are um, called Mondans. Here is from the experiment. I'm actually going to prune this. Like I said, this, there's going to be a lot of pruning later this week, um, but this is a mole berry, the one that we talked about with the 45 days, how to four times your mole berries in 45 days. This one, this is the one. And if you remember that video, look at how tall it is. Eight feet tall. It's getting big. So that's doing good. Uh, star fruit, sad. Oh, hibiscus. Oh, and these are um, variegated gingers, not edible types. They're just there. Something that's in the cordyline family. I don't remember what it is. Pretty fuchsia hibiscus. These are pretty. And oh, my star fruit. I never pay attention to this thing. And then I do tours like this and I'm like, all right, I have that. I should probably make it get better. I have the fertilizer you guys even recommended to me. It's been sitting in my garage for like six or nine months now. Still don't. I think because I'm not excited about star fruit, so I just don't care. So there you go. More hibiscus. I like the hibiscus. It's pretty. Um, here's our orange tree. It's still kicking it. It's still going. It's still doing something. It has set fruit. The tree continues to look sad. I have chopped away some of these ferns at points, but uh, you know, do what you can. I love this type of hibiscus. This is so pretty. Did you hear that? That chirp, chirp, that's a cardinal. They've nested in our years, in our year. They've nested, the cardinals have been nesting in our yard. So we've had, we did not really get many cardinals last year. I actually, the last few years, I've never really seen maybe a cardinal here and there once in a blue moon. Um, but this year, cardinals, lots and lots of cardinals. And they like to hang out by our beautiful red hibiscus flower. That's pretty. They hang back in here. I hear them over here a lot. Um, Exora is this yellow plant. This is a great Florida friendly if you want just kind of flowers all year round. And they come in like a couple different colors, like yellow. They come in like great tropical tropical colors so like yellow um like that flamingo pink coral red this is an annoying elephant ear let's not talk about that more cordial <laughs> here's my gardenia it's being a gardenia it's just hanging out right now uh here is the black sapote aka the taco pudding fruit and it is huge but i told it this year i said you get it together you better start pro producing some fruit or you're gone you got two more years that's it so it did produce some fruit. Um, let's see if you can see it. Can you guys see? Can I even see it? I don't know if I can even see it. It's like up there. There's some around here. Let's see if there's any closer I can point to. But there is some here. But if it doesn't get it together, I'm not keeping a huge tree. I don't know, there's like five or six. I'm not gonna keep a huge tree for like 10 pieces of fruit. This thing is taking up a massive amount of space in the yard. And honestly, similar shape, better for wildlife. I'm gonna plant a magnolia. It's native, it gets big old flowers. There's edible components to it. I saw some people who do like the foraging thing. I don't know that I'd eat it, but I like flowers, right? Like the size of your face. So it can either figure itself out, gone. So there you go. <laughs> More dwarf bananas. Crotons have gotten ginormous, taller than me now. These ones actually did really, really well. And of course, more hibiscus with our tallest ones being our seminal hibiscus, which is that pale pink flower. Um, and then there's some white with red. There's just a couple different colors over here, which are super pretty. And hey, let's just also give a round of applause for one of our favorite Florida trees, the slash pine. Woo! Look at how big they are. I actually realized I have a really old one. I listened to a talk from Florida Native Plant Society, and they were talking about these certain woodpeckers that only can house themselves in old growth slash pines or old pines 
and they were explaining how you could tell that you have a really old one and when they were explaining it, i was like i bet that one in the back that always has like this really huge trunk but you can't really tell in any of my videos because the, the trunk's in the eureka palms but it's that one right wait where, where is it i don't know if i can show it to you easily let me see if i line myself up well but this one this one this one right here is a very old pine i was like yeah we got an old one one of the things that we're actually thinking about for the future as we think through a whole redesign of this backyard is adding a couple more pines because we lost a couple pines since we moved in from disease so we've been thinking about how we're going to add back in because you know most of our pines are probably i don't know i don't know how you age them but i just know that they're not as old that one's really old there's not a lot in the neighborhood i do go around and stare at everyone's pines as i walk my dogs so don't you why wouldn't you so, but as you can see, a lot of the tropical exotics are doing really well. Our more tropical-ish natives are doing really well. Um, and temperate climate plants, not so happy. But let's head this way. Sorry for the air conditioner, but it's summer, so I'm not sorry because it's hot. You can see Mr. Cliff's yard. His yard's going bananas. <laughs> he has decided he doesn't want any grass anymore, so just getting rid of all of it right now <laughs> but he's excited because he's been getting a lot more butterflies um he's got some cosmos over here and lumbago i always forget lumbago so his lumbagos are looking really nice they're getting this section gets a lot of sun throughout the day it takes quite a beating um, with the sun and but it this place is great because he gets so many butterflies oh papaya that i gave him <laughs> but he gets a lot over here and his fire bushes ever since we've been sharing mulch um oh hi monarch down by my feet um ever since we've been sharing mulch his fire bushes this one was always looking great but the ones that are down here these used to look not so great and now that we've been sharing mulch he's been putting just the mulch down below i think i gave him that little nutrition boost that they need and these have been gorgeous these used to look like sticks a few years ago so they're looking awesome and he's just been letting him fill in we don't know why we have this spot that just is so sad but it is and, but it has been showing the place that my Maypop passion vine keeps popping up everywhere. But the little, the little gulf frillaries, they are eating the snot out of that thing. I, I, it's not growing. Last year we have flowers up on top around this time of year. This year you have to find the vine. It is really, we've got a lot of butterflies. The butterflies are very happy and they're laying lots of babies who are eating the, just eating and eating and eating. Oh, but here, oh, the Florida Native Plant Landscaping Project. You guys all remember this one and look at it needs pruning i know everything needs pruning right now that's the thing with summer in florida you don't want to be out here a lot it's really hot and then everything explodes so the beauty berries are on either side are looking awesome the morning glory doesn't like that teepee trellis and i need to fix it again so but it actually is flowering up on top over here with the coral honeysuckle and the scorpion tail this year just blew up it is super happy. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let's see, let's go down here. It's just exploded. The pine lantana is still in there. They're kind of sharing the space, um, but it's exploded and it's looking really happy and full. So that's what's still in that area. It's looking great. I just need to prune, 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 prune. I need to prune. Ugh, let's go through our Florida Native Landscaping Project stuff. Look at that. That coral honeysuckle has been looking gorgeous you can see the leaves kind of better now the morning glory is actually on the top you can see kind of one of the flowers that's spent for the day because they, they blossom in the morning and then they kind of by the end of the day um our yellow top has filled in if you remember this like a couple months ago i think i did the last update on this it's filled in so it's about to go into bloom i need to cut this back you see our sea side golden rods looking awesome the transdensia aka spider wart is kind of getting totally demolished because it's just too much stuff going on here too much everybody needs to be pruned they need it and then mr cliff and i've been talking about like why why is this all dying here but who knows we'll figure it out that's the fun of gardening and him and i always chat about it and that's always the fun thing we do so i hope you enjoyed this huge summer garden update you got to see it all the front the back the good the ugly the whole thing and i hope this has got you inspired to hang on there Focus on tropicals, um, because that's what's gonna do best. Focus on 
some of the native plants, not wildflowers, but your perennials, they'll love it right now. They're exploding and get yourself a garden. And if you what, guess what? If it's too much right now, don't worry about it. Start in fall, fall gets better. So I hope you enjoyed this. Go ahead and check out last year's summer, summer tour, 2021, 2022. What year is it? Okay, enjoy it. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.